Welcome to Scrutinize My System. This episode will be looking at macOS 1. This version at the time was called System Software, and the numbering system won't come into play until System Software 5. So the numbering on this operating system will be based on the system version reported by the operating system itself. With that said, let's take a look at the history and the system itself. The computer for the rest of us was what Steve Jobs said on January 24th, 1984. A much more affordable computer than the Lisa, the Macintosh already had thousands of customers eagerly waiting to get their hands on their new technology. Adapted from much of what the Lisa was built on, the Macintosh was specifically designed to fit anywhere on a desk, operate on any network, travel wherever in a carrying bag, and read most of the mainstream file formats in existence at the time. Sockets on the back of the computer provided future expansion in preparation for Ethernet, as well as existing 3278 datacom connections for existing IBM mainframes. The Macintosh was so superior to the original Lisa that Apple as a company offered free upgrades to owners to obtain the Lisa 2.5, the second generation Lisa that came with an external hard drive and three and a half floppy drives instead of the five and a quarter. The same Lisa would be retrofitted to run the same operating system as the Macintosh and eventually adopt the name the Macintosh XL. The operating system was split into two. The floppy disk at the time only held 400 kilobytes of data, so storage was very limited. Instead of using two disks, however, Apple chose to install the second half of the operating system on the ROM of the motherboard. This would conserve space on the disk, but also limit what machines could run the operating system to only the ones with the other half of the operating system pre-installed. The same Motorola processor, which was used in the Lisa, was also used for the Macintosh, with hopes of utilizing the full 32-bit power of the new system. But there was a problem. The physical processor they inserted into the machine only had 24 physical pins that acted as address lines, forcing them to run their operating system at 24 bits, instead of 32 bits they had originally hoped for. To make up for this, the remaining 8 bits were used for flags in the memory. Alright, so before we actually go into the operating system itself, I do want to make a shout out to Mini VMAC. That is the virtual machine that we're currently using for this. Uh, go check them out. Without them, this would be a lot more difficult. So without further ado, let's go ahead and boot up one of the operating systems to see how this goes. Um, we're going to start off with system 0.97. This was in theory advertised as the uh, system software one, but so we'll get into that in just a second. So we got system version here, and then we got about the finder here. I'll show you this one first. So we got the Macintosh F finder version 1.0, 18th January 1984. Uh, and then you got the copyright on here. This one here, however, if you click on it, says the version is 0 0.97 on the exact same date. And then you click anywhere, it'll beep, and you got to click on it back, and then it'll just close itself back up. Um, there's not really a whole lot here in regards to programs. Uh, you got the disk copy, which if I had a second disk, uh, floppy disk attached to this thing, we can copy it. Uh, fonts and font movers are pretty much the same thing. I'll open them both up just to show them off. Now, the disk is locked, so it's, there's not much I'm going to be able to do with it, and that's why this message pops up. Um, something I did want to point out, though, you'll notice that everything's kind of crammed up in this corner. Originally, the operating system had a much smaller resolution, and I did increase the resolution on this one because I wanted it to actually look clean and crisp for the uh, video. But with that said, the half of the operating system that was stored on the machine you can technically modify the ROM for it in the virtual machine to pretty much make it any resolution you want because the, the ROM contains the drivers. It contains a, contains a few other things. I don't remember exactly what it does. So that's the font mover. Then you got regular fonts. And it's exactly the same thing. Exact same fonts. You can scroll through here and everything and it's going to give you the exact same stuff. So... In regards to what's on the floppy disk itself, there's not a whole lot. 
Um, the option menu, something else I want to point out here is that you'll notice there's no shutdown option here. Um, pay attention to what's in here because you got cleanup, you got empty trash, you got to erase this. This is kind of faded out because there's nothing in the trash and we can open that up just to show, yep, zero items. So you got cleanup, empty trash, erase disk. Uh, view. If you open up a folder, you can actually arrange it from the icons. You can organize it by the names, the dates, the sizes, the kinds. Everybody likes icons because icons are pretty. Although, for some reason with this operating system, with this gray, uh, there was a lot of complaints at the time when this was released because everything was black and white and people wanted color. And to an extent, I mean, they were trying to make this thing affordable, but at the same time, this black and white does kind of make it a little creepy. If you play uh, Pony Island, you'll kind of have an idea of it, but uh, um, there was a game that was kind of focused on just like a creepy aspect of old machines, but... Um, so clipboard, I do want to show you this. You can... I'm going to have to drag it to the desktop. If you select this and... Oh yeah, right-click doesn't work yet. If you select this, you click uh, Copy. I didn't get the R on here. Let me let me redo that. Click Copy. And the text pops up in the regular clipboard. I want to point this out because there's two clipboards on this machine. This one does strictly text. If you come up to here and you click Show it's Clipboard, this is just the text one here. I don't think... I don't know. Yeah, it's not going to let me delete it. It'll just erase itself when uh, when I shut it down. But anyways, but um, so we come up here and I'll show you the second one since we're already talking about it. The second one is going to be scrapbook. And from here, you in theory can copy and paste pictures. There's a disclaimer here that says use this, well, not a disclaimer, but there's a note here that says use the scrapbook to store a variety of text selections and pictures which may be transferred between applications. From the edit menu, cut or copy an item on the scrapbook, or from the scrapbook, excuse me, then paste it into an application and document. And then there's a couple of them here that are already preset, and it kind of tells you if it's a picture. And then here it's just text. So you got pictures here, you got a pictures here, you got kind of a picture here. I, they're, they're just basic pictures. This is probably like the most elaborate one right here is this robot. But I wanted to show you that because we we're talking about uh, copy and paste at the same time. So there's that. Um, I'm going to go through these functions one last time. So you guys, under special, clean up empty trash and erase disk. You notice that there's no soft shutdown for this machine yet. That's not going to come until System Software 2. And I'll show you that in the next episode. So you got views, icon, name, date, size, you got all that. Uh, edit, you got undo, cut, copy, paste, clear, select all, which does apply to the file systems. Or, excuse me, it does apply to the files. So clipboard is the text. We got file open, get info. That opens them individually since it's not going to group them all together. So we got the, the disk itself and we got the trash. And it tells you what exactly is the trash. That's the nice thing about it. I could, in theory, eject it. It's not going to work on this one for some reason because the disk is locked. Oh, wait, no, it worked. Then it just kind of grays everything out. So you got the finder and then you can come up here I do want to show you this too. This is actually a. I guess it would help if I uh, reinserted the uh, the disk. Let's go ahead and redo that. Okay, there we go. So, I want to show you this: the clock. It doesn't seem any. It doesn't seem remarkable now, but this is the date and time that I'm currently recording it. Uh, March 22nd, 2020. And the reason I point that out is because this machine is Y2K compliant, unlike its predecessor, the Apple Lisa. So this machine has already been future-proofed in that regard. But 
in other regards, it's not so much future proof, but um, we'll talk about that as we go on. So that's the clock calculator is pretty self-explanatory. Five plus five is going to equal 10. So we know that works. Uh, control panel. So the interesting part about the control panel is that it looks more like a panel than your normal control panel on a computer. So this one, they were trying to make it look like, well, a panel. So you got your speaker volume here. You got your date and time here. This here tells you how many times the menu will flash when you click on something. So let's say uh, you click on clear and it, it blinks three times. If I set it to once, it'll blink once and it's done. Hit zero, doesn't blink at all. So that's what that is. This tells this is the speed of how fast the uh, the little cursor when you're typing is blinking. Um, this is how fast you can double click. This is interesting here because at the time they didn't exactly have pictures you can put on the wall, but instead you can have little pixels that you can edit. And I'll show you how that works in a second. So let's say I decide I'm going to draw a little line here. Let's do a couple different lines. I'll make that blank. So we're going to have little lines here. I click on this and it applies it in the back. And that kind of hurts my eyes. But we'll go ahead and change that back after we reset this. So that's this here. The mouse is, I think this is the mouse speed, but that doesn't really um, do anything much. I'm just going to fill this in. I'll, we'll make the whole thing just black so we can actually see this better. There we go. So, come to the keycaps. This is an on-screen keyboard. You can type all the stuff here. Um, we've got a little puzzle. I think I skipped a notepad. Notepad is interesting because it's not exactly the same as Microsoft's Notepad on their Windows operating system. So for this one instead, you would click on these and you have eight pages that you can uh, flip back and forth between. And it does circle around too, so that's the Notepad. And then I already showed you Puzzle, which you just click on this and you kind of play around with that. That's that. I'm not going to fiddle around with that. And then the scrapbook, we already talked about that. So let's go ahead. I do want to show you one last time before I close this. This is the Macintosh Finder version 1.0. I'm going to show you this because the next one is going to be different. Um, it's technically what going to advertise as 1.1. So we're going to be tuned to slight, technically two different operating systems. But... Let me see if I can go ahead and eject this. And then we'll reset it. All right, so this is system 1.1, and the graph, the back on the graphics kind of changed already because I put in a different disk. But check this out. I'm gonna go straight to the, about the Finder immediately. Look at this. Look at this fancy graphics. They really took pride in this one right here. This one is a Macintosh Finder version 1.1. So, not really much has changed between the two and I'll show you I'll go through the list and so show you what has changed um, fonts and the font movers are pretty much the exact same <coughs> excuse me system folder pretty much the same not much has changed at the font mover disk copy that hasn't changed what has changed though is now you have the option to set a startup disk or that's that's the only change between the special menu everything else is pretty much the same even the control panels the same 
but the scrapbook's going to be a little, it's going to have slightly different stuff in here. So you can tell this text is already bigger. And almost immediately, you see the Apple, um, the Macintosh logo on here. Not the Finder logo, that changes later on. This is the, um, the original Macintosh logo. So you got the, uh, the bar charts here, you got Cafe Mac, and then you got a robot. So later on, you'll see that this icon slowly start changing to essentially a face. But for now, this is their logo that they've been using for these machines. And that's pretty much it. Everything else is pretty much the same. And that is, that is uh, the system software one. Stay tuned for more episodes. We'll be doing them as we gradually go. Uh, for the numbering system, since the early ones are going to be a little difficult, we're going by, from 1 through 4, we're going to be going by the version number that's getting reported by the actual operating system for the Macintosh Finder. Version 5 is going to be a little different because that one's advertised on the box that it was retailing in. And then number 6 and later... That one's pretty self-explanatory. Both the box and the uh, the software will advertise everything pretty uh, pretty numerically, so that should be pretty straightforward afterwards. So I just want to make that disclaimer now that we're going to be going by what this reports here between system software one through four. All right. Uh, if you joined this episode, please subscribe. I've got more on the way. I'm going to be doing both Apple and uh, Microsoft. And stay tuned for more, and please subscribe.